It is Pox again. And this is State of RPG, Episode 1, the pilot, next chapter. Today with us, we have guest stars, Attack of the Afro, and Cooters. Thanks for coming, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us. All right. What's up, bro? <laughs> so today, what we're going to be doing is everything RPG related. The general rule of how we're going to do State of RPG is this. We're going to bring on two guest stars every two weeks, have a fun discussion about anything that we happen to be playing. We're going to discuss our main squeeze, whatever that main game is you're playing out there that it happens to have health bar, some number crunching, or maybe even some role playing. After that, we're going to be talking about any kind of new releases or new patch notes that are coming out that we're excited about. And lastly, we're going to go into some drama llamas, some news, things that are happening in the scene out there that people are just want to talk about when it's hot. Maybe this episode we'll talk about somebody who has the most downvotes of all time on Reddit. But maybe that's just me. I don't know. What do you think, Pox? What's your game? What are you playing? So currently, uh, I've been playing Warframe personally. Um, I've been having a lot of fun in Warframe. Um, it just recently had like a new expansion, the uh, Plains of Eidolon. So uh, it's pretty much like an instant space game. But the best part about Warframe is that it is truly free to play with very little actual like... Um, pay to win aspect there's a lot of pay to advance and get quicker but for the most part it's like your journey through the game uh, which is a lot of fun and i'd honestly highly recommend the game to pretty much everyone who hasn't tried it all right so in this game warframe you're saying you can pay to advance last night we were talking about this and you educated me on this subject so pay to advance do we even need to do it or is it something that you want to do just because how like, does this work Honestly, if you want my opinion, you don't really need it. Like, I can understand from, a like, a different consumer where they are put off by the game because there is, like, an extreme amount of pay for convenience. But the whole point of the game is, like, to progress and to earn your progression, right? So, like, if you're skipping your progression by making the game easier, what are you winning? It's not, it's not a competitive game. You can try to look at any game competitive, but I really don't think that's the right nature to look at it in. Okay, okay. And then Cooters... What are you playing right now? What's your main squeeze? I think I know what game it is. I've been playing the Path, Path of Exiles. Uh, been playing for like I think a year and at least seven, eight months now. It's been a long time. A firm commitment. Yeah, haven't <laughs> uh, haven't jumped jumped uh, ship yet, but it's a fun game. I mean, I think like even without the the new leagues and everything, uh, pretty much just the, I guess the versatility of like you know builds and and characters and gear and stuff they keep on adding stuff every league too so there's always stuff to do i mean it's one of those things where you think you've kind of done it all and then you know you try something else and you kind of it kind of revitalizes that i guess you know you might get in this little slump and then you try something a little different be it you know maybe you do hardcore maybe you do solo self found or, or just change up your build style or your play style so it, i don't know i think it's a it's just a really good game that has a lot of expandability so path of exo so i know mr attack of the Afro. we had a discussion all right, check this out. So all of us are obviously well-known Path of Exile people. We've all done our racing. We've all done our wacky builds, things like that. And Kudas, come on. Give yourself some credit here. You're pretty yeah, good. Come you, on. You come shout on. Cast you've, you've, earned, you've earned it. Seriously, come on. So Afro, the first time I ever met you, you explained Path of Exile to me. I want you to do that again. Do you? What was your gripe with the game? I mean, it was just the overwhelming <laughs> skill tree was really it. I didn't know really start i have no idea like i know how i like to play but i didn't know how that's going to translate in the game and i just didn't i guess i've never really played it so i mean it's like you just press that p button and then all of a sudden you're just like what am i even looking that looks at? i don't know i don't even it's a little <laughs> overwhelming bro it's a little, and you're like oh it's numbers it's numbers i'm like i love numbers but i don't even know what i'm looking at right now man so i don't even know how y'all play that and you're like different builds so you're like you're going through that skill tree several times to try and oh, yeah. make something cool. Like, bro, I just, that thing is that's... mirrored in all three of our heads to a certain degree. Like, For you people. can like start shooting out n names, and we know exactly what you're. For saying. some people who aren't yeah. aware, Path of Exile has, I believe, like over one thousand three hundred uh, passive abilities on their skill tree. Um, or passive tree, so it can be a very mm -hmm. overwhelming experience if there's any people who haven't played it. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, just just <laughs> just a little, little bit. bit. I think uh, when it comes to PoE with the passive skill tree, a lot of people look at it too much at the whole, where they like zoom out and they're like, oh my god, this is so, yeah. There's so much stuff, right? Because it's like this whole web of stuff. But if you kind of like take everything as a section and just understand that everything is linear to like, you know, the point that you put in, you only can really go like so many different ways, you know, and eventually just branch out. 
uh, it gets it gets a lot less overwhelming. And also, once you play, you know, you just play the same character a few times, you kind of understand, you know, a good, I would say, about a third of the, the whole thing. And that really kind of breaks down a lot of that, uh, I don't know, that overwhelming fear of, like, I don't know what I'm doing kind of right, thing. Right, right. Um, I think it really only takes, you know, a few playthroughs, like, with some characters. And you kind of, once you know, I would say, even, not even the whole tree, if you know just a third of it, you feel pretty confident at that point. It's true. You get you get very complacent in the game once you find something that works. Yeah. So is it like, is the whole tree thing is just clusters of potential archetypes of how you want to play? Is that what Yeah, if you about? play the ranger, that's the green class, the dexterity. So she's just in the green side of the tree. And then you could branch off to maybe the red green side or the green blue. I got to try. So that's how you work. You know, you just kind of work uh, around that sucker. I mean, if you think about it in this way where, uh, you know, every class or every character has their own specific skill tree. Like, if you saw a game like that where, you know, you pick a warrior, oh, this is my skill tree, you know, like in WoW right, or something. Right, right, oh, you right. know, this is my mage, this is my skill tree. Now, all they did is basically took those skill trees and put them all in the same thing because they all connect to each other, right? Okay. It's kind of that concept where all everyone has their kind of individual skill trees, like, around their area, but you can potentially branch out to other people's or well, other classes' to skill trees. Yeah. I'm going to have to step in a little baby. And no. Like... I, think, I think it's just the problem. <laughs> I think a lot of I think a lot of people just, like I said, look at it from like that whole that whole spectrum. And they're like, "Oh my god, like Intense. I don't even understand this." Dude. But if like if you zoom in and just kind of like each level, just kind of you know pick your point, you right. know, and plot it out. Like don't think about thinking about it ahead of time. Just kind of just do it and play around with it. Yeah, like they'll be like, "This is not hard. This is really not hard." All right. One thing All right. I will tell you though, Afro, <clears throat> that's kind of gonna like make this even more crazy is you're gonna find jewel sockets or jewels. That's that on your tree. What are the what are the things that you guys are all okay. looking and you're stacking so, up? Like, so a jewel on, can be like different properties just like your equipment right the thing is though is some jewels can convert nodes around the tree so it'll have an area so it'll be like area large converts you know i don't know say physical property attacks into fire damage just as a random example right so you can have even more customization because say you're like well, I really like this ranger. You know, I like how she looks. I like her star. It makes me, you know, I, I want to play this class. But you're like, but I really want to get something all the way over there that's like 40 points. Is oh, there any, wow. okay. but maybe there's a jewel that like mimics it halfway. So it's like converts, you know, I don't know, dodge into block or block into this. Or, you know, there's a lot of really quirky things on there that's pretty interesting that you can get. Long story short, it's a highly customizable game. It's our main squeeze. I mean, that's what started us on Twitch, really. Right, All of us right. got partnered through PoE. Let's talk about what you do, though. What's your main yeah. squeeze right now, Alpha? I have, I have so many main squeezes, but I mean, regardless of what I play in a given day, it's like a battleground as it being what I play in the end of the day. And I play it just because player are known battlegrounds. You know, let's say it the right way because they get upset about it. <laughs> Who's they? I honestly play it they. The, the company gets mad. They. They. Yeah. The company it's legit not, gets bad. Really? Like, it's, it's not PUBG. PUBG. It's PUBG. It's PUBG. Come it's on, like, come on like, man. Come on. <laughs> Everyone takes an acronym and pronounces it. I mean, honestly, when I've been playing this game since, since I guess, the, except for except you know, for PUE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're okay with it yeah. then. Sometimes no, no Poe. If you say no Poe, po, oh, you're, you're out, man. Don't angry. ever, don't ever say Poe, man. Sometimes when y'all say it fast, I think you're saying Pee Wee, and I'm like, okay, what? Pee Wee, yeah, I've heard that. I think Pee Wee's better than Poe, so it's okay. Right. And I play, I mean, I play PUBG. I've been playing it since, like, I saw that their tiny little, a little tiny area at PAX East in 2016. And they, like, gave me a, I don't know, bunch of codes. And they're like, yeah, come play this game. And then since then, it's just been, it's skyrocketed. I mean, it's a fairly popular game. I mean, but I just I like it for the simple fact that it has it has a crossbow in it. And, uh, <laughs> That's I play it like a weirdo, man. I don't know, like every game that I play, like if it's Call of Duty or a shooter, I don't play with the regular way. I like to play with like either the blades, throwable blades, or a crossbow. Just this sounds like, like my kind of guy here. The inverse. Know, Screw meta. Let's just do I it. Know. I like that pretty much like you like to get as much fun as you can out of the game. Yeah, like I'm not gonna be all like, oh, I need to get the AK and the best ammo and all this. Like I'll go for those things. But like, if I get a crossbow, like if I find cool weapons, I'm like, yeah, who needs a I'll just hand them off. See, like... I think that's a good mental. I think that's a good mentality for PUE because there's a lot of people who are really into the meta, right? In PUE, like you have to do X, Y, Z, or else you have a shit build. But right, the thing right. is, with like you know, or I should say crap build. But the thing is, if you have that mentality where it's like I can do what I want, I can really do anything. I don't really care. Right. I think that's a good. That's a good mentality. Smoke, smoke grenades, crossbow, and Molotov cocktails. Those are my like <laughs> favorite things. 
Yep. So let me ask you, you just create chaos in that game with those. Let me ask you a cool, an interesting question. Do you? So I'm guessing when you're in PUBG and you're in the moment, does your heart start racing? Do you get like so those that's, moments? That's the main reason that I like the game. I don't I mean like I, I get it. It's a, it's another shooter game. It's a battle royale. It's got it's got a it's really popular. But like that's what I love and hate about the game is that it is long, long extended extended moments of doing nothing and nothing going on. And then boom, boom. it's ridiculously crazy. So like my heart would jump <laughs> big time sometimes, especially on my mic. I have a bass boost. And I'll put the bass boost on so I can hear someone in another building walking upstairs and stuff. You have it on when you got a gunshot that comes around the corner. <laughs> you start shaking. <laughs> no, you got so your like bad. Molotov ready to go. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I've had times like when you're like, because let's be real, you got a hundred people. You play the game for like 20, 30 minutes, and then it comes to the end when you're like the gas is around you and you're sitting in a corner and you're like because you can't move anywhere and you're like i don't know where this guy is and you walk outside and just blow up it's like it's such a <laughs> i don't know man it's a really emotional game for, from that aspect it's kind of corny because you get shot easily sometimes but that that extended period of nothing turning into a huge firefight is like the best part for me I guess. and if i can get a crossbow in there in the meantime man it's always icing on the cake it's always so crazy to hear the difference in how other people play games. So like in shooters or games that are, you know, survival games, you really pay attention to the audio and what's going oh, on yeah. around you. When you play oh, no. an MMO or like an action role-playing game, you're just like, man, let me just slam my keyboard as fast uh -uh. as I can. <laughs> Turn I gotta hear. Like there'll be times when like, uh, <laughs> you know, we'll come up on a, on, on a, I don't know, some little compound with a bunch of, a uh, bunch of buildings. I'll jump out, a car will come by, but I'll know what's on the other side of the buildings and I'll hear it go from this ear to that ear. And I'll hear them jump out so that I know not to go left side, get them from the right side. Oh my over there. goodness, this metal. So it gets weird sometimes. Man. Dang. When the sound messes up, because it's still a game that's in, I guess, in beta. All oh, right, so that. <laughs> here we go. On, on this podcast, we're going to do something new. At the end of every time we, we do go through these segments, instead of just cutting right to the next segment, we're going to do this thing called Vibe. Now, Pox came up with this idea. And the vibe is this this is your personal rating on the game that you're playing right now in the moment. Based off of if you just looked at some patch notes, you actually played it, or you're a veteran at it. So your vibe could be anything on a number scale, two, three pancakes out of four waffles. That's up to you. So what's your vibe right now on PUBG? Uh, on, on PUBG, my vibe right now, <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll put it on a bacon scale. You know, some people like bacon in certain ways. I like my bacon, like, right in the middle, a little crispy, but a little, a little rubbery, too. Not rubber, but, you know, it's got to have a good consistency. Yeah, yeah. And I'd give it, like... <laughs> Since it's been around for a while, I don't have to get only three out of five bacon slices. That's Ooh. it. Only oh, three man. out of five because Ooh. they just put are out. Are they the... cooked right though? At least, at least they're cooked. They're, right? they're, they're cooked right, but you're only getting three out of five because they oh, just man. implemented vaulting. Because you can now start climbing on objects, and you can even do a little thing where you could peek up and then go down, which is pretty dope. Like, I'm waiting for them to be able to do. I get on a wall, throw something over. Until then, it'll be three bacon strips out of five. That's all I'll give it. <laughs> All okay, right. man. Fair enough. Hey, dude, people like bacon. I think they'll be okay with that. And if they don't, then it will be what? It could be fake and bacon, right? The turkey bacon? If it's okay. not turkey bacon. Not turkey bacon. I'm cool with that. All right, and Pox, your experiences in Warframe, if I may get this right, you've been straight for two weeks straight, so you got some insight. Yeah. What's your vibe on Warframe currently? Man, I got to say, um, I'll give it a solid I'll give it a solid 8 out of 10. Really? Uh, but if I had to like gauge it by mini Ks, it's going to get a seven out of nine for a mini K. Oh. Can be a little resident sleeper K at times when you're doing the same content, but it's it's solid, man. I'm very happy with it with the free to play model. And it, even though it is uh, free to play, you can pay for convenience and unlocking things quicker. You entirely don't need to do it. Would you say the game is truly free to play? By I mean, like honestly, absolutely. The thing is, though, is like not to go too much off segment, but like if you're going to play a game 15 hours a day and you don't put any money into the game ever, expect to be gated at a certain point. Yeah. Just by time, not not but like you have to pay, but you have to wait because if you're gonna put 60 hours a week into our game, you know, like like I put <laughs> I put $25 in and I've put 100 hours into the game and I'm not gated at all. It was only 25 and it's no problem. I could go for another 100 and I'll be okay. Cool. And Cooters and I've been playing the Turmoil Race. So basically Mayhem Light TM. Mm -hmm. Mayhem's coming what, up what, and what, that's what, the real hype. Can you give me like a before you sure. go? What is, what is that? Sure. All right. So turmoil thing? is this. So Path of Exile every three months comes out with a new ladder, 
right? You can rise your best. Everyone has a fresh economy, things like that. Okay. But during these three month ladders, they'll release these little 10 day ladders where you just like no life it, trying to go as hard as you can because you only have 10 days. You die, that's it. You know, you so can come back. Yeah. I see you'll get upset when you die. You're like, oh, that's uh, fine. There it is. Yeah, because like, you got to take days to make it or break wow. it. If you're breaking it, well, then it sucks to suck, you know? Interesting. It sucks to suck. Cooters, you ready for mayhem? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I think I think the timing, unfortunately, for for US is it's kind of kind of sucks just because there's Thanksgiving weekend. I have a lot of family stuff, so it's like it is I'm not Thanksgiving. Gonna, I'm just not gonna be. Com I'm, I mean, I wasn't competitive in turmoil because I, I. It's one of those things where I would like to. I I don't know. Sometimes I like the no life this stuff, but ten days is just it's so much stuff. I like to do. I like to change up the the vibe of the stream. Or else I also get so bored with the ten day stuff. I'm just not a big ten day race fan at all. Okay, that's fair. That's my favorite. The short races, the three months are good too. See, I like. I mean, I like the two hour type races, one hour, two oh, hour races. Okay. I like the short short races because it's like you get it over. You die. You know, you're out, and they're like, ah, oh, whatever, it's done. But with right. the ten day, you feel like you know you die early on. You're like, oh man, like. Like you can still catch up, so you're kind of like, oh, kind of like obligated to like start a new character and it's try. It's the again. long con, not the short con. It's a marathon, and I I don't know. It's nice because you know even if you start a day late, you can still kind of do well because a lot of people do start to kind of fall off. You know, once they get to 90s or so, high 80s, 90s, a lot of people slow down or they just quit. Um, but I don't know. Like for me, the 10 day stuff is just I get I get bored pretty easily with that stuff because uh, I just don't like doing maps and map because it's literally maps for days and I just I'm yep. just like Ugh. all right Let's so what's your vibe it. on the 10 day races then give us your vibe my vibe on a 10 day race if I'm yeah. not gonna if I just to do 10 day on PUA man uh like I would say I give it like a two out of five two out of five what two out of five Stroop waffles wow. Stroop waffles are Stroop waffles are amazing either way though but i'm like i said i'm not a 10 day race person if i had a choice and i could like feel good about not not streaming at all during the 10 day i'd probably you know actually i'm gonna be honest here i when i saw pox streaming like a totally different game i was like oh man i envy pox right now he's the guy he's like i'm not even gonna stream a 10 day race oh. it's like a like oh man i wish i could be that guy like i was like i was thinking wow i saw that that's the guy right there, man. Says you know, what? screw the ten day race. I'm just gonna play a different <laughs> game. I was watching him and another person who usually plays uh, Poe, and I was thinking like, those guys, man. One so day. What is the what is the payoff? What is this? Are you doing these races? You're doing in particular builds, in particular areas. What is the humongous payoff that's worth that whole grind session? So like, they have these things called demis, which you know they have like special items in the game. Alt arts are huge in the game. Like so, basically okay. you get an item that you can wear, uh, but it's like. A different artwork so you know when you when you have it it's kind of limited almost no one has one so it's cosmetic basically. Uh, yeah and and these demis cool. give you item rarity and the only way right. you can oh, get okay. this unique set of gear is by winning a race that's it okay. it's the that's only cool. time you can't find it any other time in the game it's just winning a race i think so it's, it's like tradable but trophy you know. it's tradable it is absolutely tradable but the only way they can enter the economy is through racing so right, right. there so... is one more thing I want to chime into this as well. When you do these races, these short-term races, any type of race basically that's even over like 24 hours, it's a whole new economy. So like, oh wow, it all it, everything starts over. You're playing. Everybody's a, all yeah, You're playing with a bunch of people. You know, thousands of people are playing this. If it's a race, it might be a couple hundred, maybe thousand, and then a new league. You know tens of thousand much more uh, but it's cool because it's a whole new economy like an item you want you know potentially could be worth 20 times the value because nobody has it vice versa a poopy item you find could be worth 20 times the value because nobody has it it's supply and demand which is really cool all right all right so my vibe on this uh the every, everything turmoil race yeah I'm, I'm down with the three out of five it's fun but it's i don't know it's three mini k's out of five oscars so there you go i'm gonna compare the two Anyways, let's segue. Let's talk some new releases. So right. there's a bunch of new games coming out that people are hyped about. This is this is the part of the podcast where we talk about patch notes, new releases, anything that you're hyped to play. And it's like, is it worth it? Is it not? I don't know. We'll see. So today I wanted to talk in specific. If we can jump right into mine, that absolutely. Cool yep. <clears throat> so let me. We're just... gonna talk. About... Oh sure, sure. Here we go. You're good. good. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So uh, just really fast, I'm going to go ahead and start with the first image, and I'll flicker through the four whenever you want. So we're good to Absolutely. Go. So what you guys see here in this picture is Stardew Valley multiplayer. If you don't know what Stardew Valley is, 
It is like Harvest Moon. It is the interactive game of life. You can do literally anything. You can make no friends. You can make some friends. You can get married. You can have some crops. You go combat in the mines all day. You pick and choose it. It is a realistic sandbox type game. And it's introducing multiplayer. Now, this multiplayer you see here, you get two additional farmhands to help you. So the main person controls the main story decisions, such as maybe helping out Joe Jamar or helping out the community center. And they also choose when to go to sleep. But you can marry whoever you want as a farmhand. You could do whatever you want as a farmhand. It's this awesome new multiplayer interaction. And I wanted to talk about that. Something about, I don't know, one guy going to the combat and getting some ore and the other person watering some crops and the other guy just fishing because that's all he wants to do. Or she. Excuse me, Cooter. With that said, Stardew Valley multiplayer. It's going to be some awesome stuff. I'm, I personally played this game with my wife. That's why I said she. I know a lot of females play this game. Dude, I have to say, I want to chime into this. I played Stardew a couple years ago. Uh, and you know me, I, I love like these farming simulator games, but I, I really like fighting. If I could fight in a farming simulator game, that's even better. <laughs> so I went like all the way over to the right like uh and started fighting these mobs and right away you get into like an endless like an endless dungeon style thing yep. which was so cool for me i was like what like the farming simulator with an endless dungeon adding in multiplayer so now i can go to the endless dungeon while other people farm for me like how perfect is that <laughs> so that's even better so i don't know i'm pretty excited for this it's true um the, the best thing about stardew valley is it is honestly a simulation of life. Obviously, it's always wholesome. The outcome is always neutral or happy. Even when you die, you just kind of like blink a little and end up end up in your home, you know? So it is, a, it is a wholesome game for all ages. But as an adult, you find yourself endlessly playing this game. I'm not kidding you. It's like 10 or $15 on Steam. It was made by one person written in C Sharp. And oh, wow. yeah, it, it, what's his name? Concerned Ape. Concerned Ape on Twitter. And he has confirmed that Stardew Valley multiplayer will be coming out quarter one-ish, maybe quarter two next year. And they're they're almost done with it. They'll also be adding a couple of new storyline quests if you've already beaten the game and you're looking for more content that you can unlock. There's a like a boat over by Willy's area on the ocean, if anyone's ever played the game, where you can go fishing. So there's like this new boat thing. I'm not sure if you go to a new island, maybe. We'll see. Anyways, what do you think about Stardew Valley, Cooters? Is this something you might consider playing or have you played? I have not played it. I've heard a lot of good things about it. Um, I probably would enjoy it. I played, it looks like, I don't know. I mean, I haven't even played Harvest Moon. I'm assuming there's a little bit of that in there. Um, I think there's also a little bit of Terraria. If you played that game. Yeah, there's a lot um, of combat. So I don't know. Like, I, I like Terraria. Uh, I like, I mean, the whole farming kind of simulator with like somewhat, uh, what do you call it? Where you have to make your choices, you know, to change the outcome of certain things i think that's cool i think it's great too for people who are into mid-maxing because with any simulator game with that you know crops and whatnot mid-maxing is definitely a thing where you know if you were into that you could do that if you're into just i know designing your farm to look a certain way aesthetically that's a thing too um i think there's a lot of options that are kind of um somewhat uh therapeutic in a way here's the thing too one day's worth of time is 20 minutes 20 minutes of RL time. Whenever you press escape or do anything, it will pause the game. But you got 20 minutes of live game that you can build around. So you're like, man, I got about an hour and 20 minutes before class. I think I'll get three days in. I know I can. That's and you just sick. get addicted. It, you know, it's just mm -hmm. that never ending grind. Oh, got to water my crops. Got to go kill some slimes. Dude, I'll agree. I've oh. gotten lost in them, man. All right. So what game did you want to talk about today, Fox? Um, so I wanted to bring up a game that isn't really talked about too much uh, that some people may not know. So this is actually a little bit of a release or some info on Risk of Rain 2 um, if people aren't familiar with it. So Risk of Rain was like this, this small bit game, like 8-bit game on Steam. Uh, it follows the category of like roguelikes. If you guys are familiar with roguelikes, where like, uh, you know, you go through a run, if your character dies, you uh, start all over again with some randomized stuff. You know, every time you fight a boss, it might be a little different, might drop some different drops, etc. So Risk of Rain 2 is coming out, and there's not too much information on it yet, but it's actually going to be their first 3D project. And I personally am a big fan of watching games develop. I think that's oh, one whoa. of the the coolest things is is watching a game start from where it was and just evolve into something else so this is something i'm super excited about the fact that it went from two dimension to three dimension is 
I've never seen a game do that so quick and so clean. So what is your thoughts on that one, Pox? I'm really excited. I mean, based off of this gift, that's five seconds that just keeps looping because this is all I can <laughs> find on the internet. I mean, it's it's a pretty big change from the, the previous combat. You know, we're used to like... Uh, in the previous Risk of Rain, it's like a side scroller, right? So you would you would slide, you know, you go up and down, and that's pretty much it. Here you have like the whole immersion. So I'm really curious, like, to see exactly what happens. It looks pretty solid. I mean, the targeting looks good. He's got like some homing shots, so that looks pretty fun. I mean, I'm overall pretty excited. And this opens up a whole new slew of weaponry too. And this game is known for its RPG weapons and gear, and now that it's three dimensional, you can do a lot more with the game physics. Pretty interesting. Hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right, is there anything else you want to talk about before we move on to the next one? Uh, yeah, there is going to be... Well, no, not for, for Risk of Rain, unless any of you guys... Have you guys ever tried Risk of Rain 1, the original never, one? Never, never. It's cool. I've, I've never been heard of it. I think it's probably like two Crazy. bucks. You can find it on Steam. Uh, so it's a 2D it. platformer. You know, it's like a maze platformer. It's very <laughs> tiny little pixels. And now it's three-dimensional. It completely changes the meta of the game. 3D cell shaded at that. I love me some two dollar Steam games. Big fan. Sweet. So let's go into Mario Odyssey, which Ooh. is Cooters' game. I personally watched Cooters for about fifteen minutes fall down the same cliff over and over in <laughs> rage and fit tantrum. Would you like to talk about your experiences in Mario Odyssey Cooters? Yeah. Um <laughs> <laughs> it's there's a lot there's a lot of stuff to talk about Mario Odyssey, uh that like things are just kind of coming back to because it's it's one of these games that um it's on the Nintendo Switch. I literally bought I bought the Nintendo Switch the day it came out. Uh, I bought Breath of the Wild. Never play. I'm one of those people who, you know, I just hoar I buy like the latest and greatest early adopter type of thing. And then be these things where I just kind of either don't use it or use it right away. And the Switch was one of those that just kind of fell by the wayside. And then I decided, you know what? Or Odyssey's new let, let me you know, give it a shot. And I hadn't played really a Mario game since like Super Mario Brothers 3. Like I never played anything in between there. I didn't play no. Galaxy, I didn't play Paper Mario, I didn't play Mario RPG or anything like that. Um, but it's one of those things where Mario Odyssey is amazing. Like I didn't know if I'd like it, but it is it is insane. It is like intense. Uh there's it's open world. There's, you know, like they had stars in Galaxy. This one has moons, but there's way more moons than there are stars. There's like I think there's like a thousand like you know collectibles that are oh hidden throughout the level. Goodness. Uh things unlock when you beat the game, so there's some like kind of, you know, replayability or, or you know stuff at the end of the game. Um if you're into, you know, if you played the older Mario, Super Mario 1, there's, like, homages to that where, you know, the game will go from 3D to 2D in certain areas, and you go into the wall, and you play it like uh, like Super so Mario cool. Bros. 1. You'll play it, and it looks like the pixel art, the artifacting looks like a cartridge type thing. You know, everything, they have things where literally there'll be, like, a bullet bill you know like the bullet mm. coming through mm -hmm. the 2d and it'll go out of the 3d and like go into the 3d world so it's, it's an interactive it's 2d 3d yeah, experience it's insane wow. uh, you like go from like you know 2d to 3d like seamlessly um there's like you know things you unlock over time by doing certain things certain things change in the worlds you know the world will change like uh permanently when you when you trigger thing events Ooh. and whatnot oh wow um, permanently yeah, so they have these things like stages, like phases in, in each land as you unlock new content. So that's really cool. That actually almost reminds me of like Super Nintendo Mario. You like hit these little colored buttons and they or the things and they add the new blocks to the levels. Right, yeah. So this would be like, you know, you do so, you beat some boss and then, you know, something like blows up and that thing's gone now and, and another thing appears in that level, you know. Um, yep. But it's, I don't know, like there's, there's even, you know, Super Mario Bros. 3. Uh, you know, in that game, you have, like, the mini games, like Toad, you know, you walk in, it's like, doo, 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 you know, playing the music, and you're like, oh, match the cards. So, uh, one of those things for me <laughs> was, like, up, you know, I had to, like, create, do, do, do. you know. <laughs> yeah, it was you, like, they played that song again? It was, I don't know what the song is like. <laughs> it's one of those things where you listen to them. If you know what the music yeah. is, you walk and you go, oh, man, it's a game. Like, you, if you played Super Brothers 3, you It's like you that happy, right like, mini game music. Exactly. No, it's the prepared. Toad mini game. Um... <laughs> It's just one of those things where there's so many throwbacks to older games and, and just like, you know, these tip of the hats to like, hey, this we did this in Super Brothers 3, we did this in Super Brothers 1, let's somehow put it in the game, but yeah. it just feels good. Like the music is reminiscent of the older games, like everything is just, it just feels, it makes you happy. If you, if you grew up on those games, it's very nostalgic, but it also has that kind of uh, new age stuff with not just, you know, the graphics, but also uh, the Switch controllers are, are kind of like the Wii. So, you know, you can use them to to do things. Like, you can 
flick them like this and you'll do a move you can uh like you know shake them and you climb faster and stuff like that and i don't know it's just kind of like this mishmash of old and new all together but it's so seamless it's just it's an amazing game i've i've never played uh like a game recently like that 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 i wanted to keep on playing if that makes sense like it's just one of those things i would say you know if someone goes uh you know i think about buying the switch or whatever i would actually say buying it just for like breath of the wild and mario odyssey it doesn't matter if there's any other games on it it's worth it wow. just because it's such a wow. good game like nice i mean i feel like people are missing out like because of it. and the switch is actually a very amazing device in terms of like the mobi like mobility of it the controllers like you know everything you can do with it it's actually nintendo did really well with that with that console like i don't i think they flopped on the wii and the wii u but oh the wii but uh the switch is it's it's really good it's i still gotta, I still gotta pick up one and play super mario odyssey immediately i that's... want to so bad now the all switching... i see is people on the everywhere i've honestly heard good reviews everywhere i go everywhere i go i've heard positive feedback from it the thing about console gaming is it's so dead you know you can just get it on a pc but nintendo will forever have that oh, elusive yeah. beautiful con console and they still have the 3ds which is still meta as heck i always forget yeah. about that yeah it's such a solid meta you know for portable gaming nintendo has never lost the portable gaming realm they've always owned it right. so i guess mobile gaming is a thing in the future I still would rather have a 3DS than play on my phone, personally. My phone is for something else entirely. I don't know where my phone is. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, the, the 3DS, albeit, like, really old and, you know, the iterations they made, it's still a, a decently, you know, good system. I think the one thing that sucks for people who might want to get into, like, streaming or, or even playing stuff on a bigger screen, you can't unless you pay a lot of money to get right. a capture card put in, right? And that's third party. It, you know, it breaks warranty. If it breaks, you know, it's two cares. Like, it's kind of like you have to buy another one. Uh, the Switch, I mean, they have all that stuff built in, you know? You can buy, like, a, a USB hub, like, for, like, $20 to, to use there. it. Yeah, you don't even need the dock, really. I mean, you oh, can really? get, like, a mobile. Like, I have I, I have one right here, actually. It's, like, $30 on, on Amazon. It just has the ports you need, like, the charging thing. And actually, I have a MacBook Pro, which I know people are going to hate me for that, but you can actually <laughs> use that charger for the Switch. Like, it works just fine because it's USB-C. So they, okay. they're, they like, up to date with, like, you know, the ports and everything like that. Interesting. Um. It's just, I don't know, it's just, it's surprising, because I didn't really think much of it, you know? It's like one of those things, I always have high hopes and low expectations for a lot of things, and this one really, like, caught me off guard, where I was like, holy crap, like, this is this is really good. Hmm. That's the best. You know, go ahead, Fox. I was just saying, that's the best, is when you don't really know what to think of a game, so you just get it, because, you know, you're like, well, I know it's going to be all right, and then it just blows your mind. Yeah, when you actually get your money's worth when you buy a video game. Right. Such a rarity this day and age. I think it's a, a decent segue here. Well, actually, we're going to hold off on that segue. I'm not going to cut you short here. Avro, you've been so quiet and patient in this new release segment. So <laughs> now the floor is yours for Identity RPG and Dead Matter. So, like, they're, and both, kind of, they're both kind of like the same kind of game. They're both Kickstarter games in a way, right? Um, there was They were in Greenlight Steam. I think Steam Greenlight is now being sunsetted into something else. But basically what it is is... I'm a big fan of open world MMO type games that really where anyone could do what they want. So an identity RPG is exactly how it sounds. It's identity RPG. You make your own identity. You could be a bum. You could be a policeman. You could be a taxi driver. You could be a mail person. You could be a, you could work at the gas station. You can own the gas station. You could be the guy that builds the gas station and actually build the actual gas station. You have to go and get the crafting material, the brick, etc. Uh, it's a really involved rpg game i feel like it's like they might be trying to take on a little too much i think what both these games are trying to do identity and dead matter is they're looking at the success of gta rp and they're trying to replicate it at a larger scale like for example like identity rpg least they just released new info on it like 77 square uh two, i'm sorry 200 square kilometer kilometer map 77 miles square miles 300 people on a server at a given time uh, and in terms of like the different tools that you could use, it's they have, they allow for mods. So like there is just so much. Like you know you could be a guy s selling cell phones on the street if you wanted to, and that's really like the main pull behind identity. The difference with Dead Matter, it's the same exact thing, except it's zombies and it's dystopian post-apocalyptic survival, which is like the games that I kind of like the most. That kind of I like survival type games in a way. I don't know. But I just like the whole idea of it being whatever you make it. 
Like I know later on I'm going to talk about uh, GTA RP, but like I like the role playing games that are like just do what you want, mm -hmm. be whatever you want to be, and if it's not there in the world, you can make it there in the world. Which is nice. Not like a Second Life type thing. No, oh, you actually have to code, or you actually have to code. Yeah. <laughs> Second Life. I, know, right? I did not expect that name drop yeah. here. Yeah, that's, that's like good, that's like dude. the. The black market of realistic video gaming. So funny, man. <laughs> but no, I'm just excited to see what they're gonna do. I just hope that to as some games do, try and bite off more than they could chew, get a bunch of money behind them, and then, you know. But what I've been seeing between the, uh, I guess the Kickstarter stuff, you know, the live dev things they do on Twitch, they're coming along nicely, sticking to their plan. I just hope they don't overindulge on the bells and whistles, making a good core game, both for identity and for dead net. Completely different studios, but with the whole Kickstarter initiative behind them, it's making me feel like they might try and be too good. Because 300 people? I mean, have any of y'all played Grand Theft Auto, like, RP on RP servers at all? Never played the RP. No. I've seen it because it's like, if, you know when you get in that, that rabbit hole of YouTube where you just start finding that one segue to the next? Well, one day I ended up in GTA 5 RP. And I must admit, the try hard aspect of this like people go all out and it is beautiful like word for word you see them moving their lips walking mm -hmm. and saying exactly what you would be saying if you were in yep. those shoes it's yep. incredible and the best is when you when like when you're in rp and that's why i like these games there's there's rp but in gta you only have like i don't know 30 or 35 people in a server at a time but there's still thousands of npcs having their own thing mm -hmm. and when an npc does something crazy that encroaches on someone on your own in-game meta scenario it's the best ever because <laughs> like like uh, uh, an npc walked by and I'm like hey what's going on fat whatever and then everyone around them be like whoa whoa what's with that and then everyone will just follow the npc down the road like what's your deal brother like then the cops get involved and that's what i'm waiting to see with this other game identity rpg because it's that's been the issue you only get 35 people in the server on gta rp but something like identity rpg or dead matter they're thinking of hundreds and hundreds of people and you know a 77 square mile environment with a variety of things you could do be build etc and you know i'm kind of interested in that big time so with that said you sent us a clip here of you <laughs> RPing in gta 5 so <laughs> Let's just show this. What's what's your character's name here? Who are you playing as? I play I play a a taxi driver named Saeed. Saeed Mitra, to be exact. Saeed Mitra. Okay. Yeah, okay. To be exact. So we're gonna, he's got a serious storyline. We're gonna listen to some Saeed here really quickly. So silly. I try to uh, fix this on so I want to go on this internet. I want to be live like everyone knows. Maybe this internet thing on this Twitch internet. I want to do it. How I can do it like this? Like this, look everyone, I'm on this internet, see? I'm Saeed, number one taxi driver. You can come click this link, you can look at me. I'm like this number one guy. I'm playing this thing. I'm all over Los Santos, my friend. Come see me, what do you think? What do you think? Number see, one. This is great, man. This is great. <laughs> I really, I really like that, dude. That's like the full the full-on like rp like that you're right you truly do jump into the game yeah, and interact dude. with it and i don't like i won't i refuse okay I, I they put you randomly in the hospital when you first get in but like i refuse to steal a car and drive over there i will call up and see if there's a taxi available <laughs> or i'll walk dude or i walk or i'll put see somebody the yeah they'll, they'll, i'll see somebody fly by in a car i'm like my friend this, you can keep please i need to uh, start this shift for the number one having a taxi Come on, please, please. I can't wait, bro. Like, I plan to get on a little bit tonight, but like, I just like the idea of people. Like, I had a, I have a whole list of people's names, dude. Who who they are? Because people have multiple characters. What they do, so you don't mess up. You can't, can't, can't mess up. Like, I mess up in this clip. Even I said I'm playing. I said I'm playing this thing. Like, no, uh... I'm not playing anything. Okay. <laughs> This is real, bro. Oh my god. Are you, so do you ever stream this live? Do you like cut off your- Yeah. Go. Oh yeah, no, I don't do any cam. I don't do any cam when I do it. So it's just showing that and I have the mouth moving and everything. Um, and I do my general thing bro. I'll come in, I'll put out a big t a tweet or an in-game message that I'm in service. I'll drive around. <laughs> I'm in I'll service. Up, I, know, I pick up NPCs, I pick up people. There's like four or five main spots that people go to. And that's why I hope with, with Identity RPG mainly, I hope I could bring in that same aspect to, in front of 300 people and not 35. Because if you know the Grand Theft Auto map, it's huge. You're not going to see everybody 
unless they have very set like RP areas for like different scenarios, shit like that. But I mean, I just can't wait. I can't wait to see what they're gonna do with uh, all three of these games. Honestly, like our GTA RP is getting crazy, but I can't wait to, to, to get back on it at least. That That's sounds awesome. cool, man. I didn't even know that this was a thing until you know I talked to you about it earlier. It's crazy, man. Uh, that's that sounds like a really fun community. Like I don't watch much things on Twitch, but that's something I would truly watch. Like that's actually the that sounds a lot of fun. Like it's the, the there's like oh no meta no meta. If you you can't if you don't know it through the game. Like if I go and watch somebody right now that's playing in my server and they're a character I know, I can't use what I found out in their stream to my advantage later on. Like if she's running for mayor or something. And I missed the speech, but I'm watching it on my tw like just watching your channel. I can't say, "Oh yeah, I saw your." I didn't. I wasn't there. I had to act as if I had no idea. Like, That's right. like if you if you get, if you get hit oh, or killed, wow. they have this rule. Like if you get hit or killed, like you can't know what happened in the last ten minutes when you come back to life, mm -hmm. unless someone was there and you can say and then go find them in game and say, "Hey, did you see what happened to me?" And they'll say, "Oh yeah, some dude punched you in the face." I'm like, "Oh, I'm going to the police." Then you can go to the pool. Wow. <laughs> yeah. There is a whole meta about it. You don't oh dude, when it, this game is, some people get really corny with it and they're like, uh, get a little too intense with it. But some of the Try scenarios that people come up with, it's so, it's like liberating. It's, it's, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. But the no idea, the creativity, like it's just, and then you could collaborate with someone as long as you stay in game. Oh my. And the devs behind it, they're doing so many big changes behind what you can and can't do city they're like changing locations they're like it's 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 pretty cool it's pretty cool like if you play the original game there's all the scenarios that you end up going into like on the one chase scene in the actual campaign single player you drive through a hospital well that's not open that's not available in the i guess like online for gta but when you on through through rp through 5m i play on um they like have that area of the map so you can go to like all the main characters houses and you can go to like the drug looking places and you can mm. go through all the entire ins and outs of every police station hospitals etc so that i had incredible. a guy i had a, a i had to go to the coroner's office one time i got put I got, I got knocked out by a car they took me to the coroner's office like the guy made me lay on the table and everything weird well i think this takes us into our vibe part everyone's gonna get their vibe on their hype game so we'll start with you cooters now you played Mario Odyssey, it's fairly new. So what's your vibe overall and your experience? Oh man, uh, I don't wanna, I, I would say if I were to give it out of like 10, I'd say like a 9 point, like 7. Oh. Like 9 point 5, 9 point 7 out of 10. It's wow, it's an a... amazing game. Like right. I've, I feel like it's hard to not like it. It's hard to not like it. Especially if you played Mario games. Even if you haven't played any, I think it's, it, it kind of caters towards um, the newer style of games that people understand it, you know, like jumping into it. Yeah. Um, but if you played the older games, it's even better. Hmm. And Pox, what's your vibe on the limited information we have about Risk of Rain 2? Man, so Risk of Rain 2, I don't want to be the guy that's like, man, go play this, and then the game like never releases, and we're like, what happened? So like, as of right now, with like, I don't know, production value from what I've seen, like from their actual stuff, I want to give it like a solid uh, solid 7 out of 10, you know, give it the nice average and weight. Um, I really want to see what else they put out before I give it a high rating and get super excited for it. Um, but just the whole swap from 2D to 3D, I think, has to give it something. Like, that's pretty cool. So. All right, and then how about you, uh, Afro, for Identify RPG well, Dead Matter, the RP? Super limited information on them, but like right now is they at their kind of like their money goals to keep their their schedule right. I think they could both ship into games that are. Eh. I'll stay with the bacon. I'm gonna stay with the. I'm going 2.5 for both the games, just because Dang. there's only there's only like you know 30 second walking around an internal area. So I don't really know too much yet. But I got a feeling they could be 4.5 so they try hard enough. Still limited information on them. Oh, there you go. Well, so it sounds like the games that we're talking about today, we just really need to see what's going on, you know. Yeah. But at least we got some good stuff, you know, like new RP on the horizon is more than just GTA, which is kind of old now. And then, exactly. of course, Risk of Rain going 2 to 3D. It's mm -hmm. awesome. For me, Stardew Valley multiplayer, oh my goodness. it's That's three capos out of three Kifos. <laughs> like, that game is going to be amazing. Get your farm hands, have fun, no life that game. Multiplayer Stardew is what's up. Get your crew now. Quarter one next year. 
<laughs> Look at this guy. He's got everything. Oh, right. yeah. I'm ready, man. We're like, we got limited information. I'm nope, not for ready. Stardew. Stardew, it's like, I follow that Twitter. I'm on it. So oh, it's... Yeah, it. Pox, now it's um, the news, the drama, and some llamas. And we're going to be talking about the most downvoted post of all time on Reddit. Or comment, rather. And that's been brought to you by EA. Pox, the floor is yours. Say what you want. Say okay, what you want. Okay, so... Now, uh, I know a lot of you guys in chat can talk about this because you guys have played it. I haven't fully played it, but I've heard a lot, a lot of feedback in my chat about uh, Star Wars. Um, so EA recently released their new Star Wars game. I don't remember which, which number was it, Star Wars Battlefront? Two. Two. Uh, so there's this crazy big thing going off now with the amount of playtime that you have to put into the game or money to unlock things that you normally would have. Like everybody wants to just go in and unlock the Jedi and pretty much go right into it. So the Reddit post posted by the actual EA people has like negative 700,000 dislikes. <laughs> oh God, man. Seven, downvotes. sorry, sorry, downvotes. Thousand. Like I, what? Like that's- Most that's, before that was like, 48k it maybe was like 50k k. or something yeah, yeah it wasn't even close that's intense and like to get a down bow on red to show up it needs to be like three for them suckers it's like one down bow and isn't actually a down bow. like this you know it, it might balance out but there's like these algorithms it out because sometimes there's like over a million upvotes on things but there's never a million upvote you know post on reddit right. so like the fact that ea managed to claim this received that much negativity in regards to their, you must buy the game and then unlock the things in the game. So they have micro tra transactions within the game you must buy. Talk about a licensing nightmare. Oh my goodness. So bad PR. I'm not going to say is it going to kill EA because pff, who cares? Yeah. What do you think about companies overall doing this? Buy the game and then pay for micro transactions. Cooters, Forzers. Put me on the spot for Damn this. Damn right. Um... You know, I've had this discussion actually in my Discord, and um, I don't really know, like, the whole grand scheme of things, because I, I never played the game. I didn't know, like, if people thought Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker were going to be unlockable right away, like, you know, if you bought, like, a deluxe version or what. Um, how do I feel about, you know, paying extra money to unlock, like, characters faster? I mean, I feel like we've kind of seen this before. Like, it's not anything super new. Like, there's always been the digital deluxe version where it's like, oh, you get these extra items or you get this faster, right. you start with this. Um, so, I mean, I can kind of see that. I think it's kind of, I think it's weird though how how they have these time caps or, you know, you're you're basically gated to where you can only get so many points every few hours and it gets longer and longer to the point where it's like, you must wait 24 hours before you can get more points in game. I think that's terrible. That's like a terrible system just because it's incentivizing like people to pay to, to you know, to unlock these things because they don't want to wait, right? It just takes too long and they want the new content and, and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. Like it's one of those things where people, I feel like there's, it's a little extreme on both ends. Um, a lot of people are saying like, oh man, I had to pay the game and I had to pay, you know, to unlock stuff in the game. That's been done before. It's it's not something new at all. Uh, nope. World of Warcraft does stuff like that. You pay right. for the game. You pay for every expansion. And you can buy like limited edition mounts and, and skins and things like that that you wouldn't normally get, right? You can't unlock. You have to pay money for it. You pay like $50 for a mount or something like that. But I guess it is a little more exclusive and it does something a little more different than like, you know, a character that's kind of a core character of the game. So... I don't know. I, I guess the way I see it is I think EA is doing their, their normal stuff where it's like, we're going to try to take as much money from you and, and not really care, you know, and, and just put up these things where these roadblocks where it's going to kind of uh, just make people want to pay more, which I think is a terrible, it's a terrible business model. I think microtransactions are fine, especially if the game is free or very, very much subsidized. The game was like, you know, 30 bucks or 20 bucks or something. And then you have these other things. I think that's fair. But you know you're paying sixty to eighty dollars for something, right. and then, and then having to shell even more money and time to unlock something that seems like a core aspect of the game, I think that's an issue. I mean, I played Destiny two recently, and I I paid eighty dollars for like the digital deluxe version, right? 
And they say, oh, when you pay for this, you get these extra weapons. And the thing is, you know, what you don't know or what you don't understand is you don't get those weapons right away. Like, I always think you get those right away. You know, you're just like, oh, I, I paid extra for the game. I'm going to get stuff, right? You have to beat the whole storyline before they even give you these things. And a lot of, and it seems like by the time you get them, you're usually overpowered for them, you know? So it's kind of like, what did I just pay for? Just, I paid mm -hmm. for a skin, essentially. I mm -hmm. wish games would do things where it's like, if you pay extra money, you know, we'll give you the items right away and they'll scale as you level. So you can pretty much just keep on using it, you know? Something where it's it's like, you know, I paid extra, but at least I got my money's worth. I feel like for this, for the Destiny thing, when it comes to the items, um, I don't know. I just, I, I don't feel like it was really worth it. So what I, what I guess what I'm trying to say is, uh, bad on EA for trying to take as much money, but in you know, and also I think a lot of people are blowing it way out of proportion. Of course, um, mm -hmm. that's always. I, I don't, I don't think anyone's in in right or wrong in this situation. I think both people have, you know, EA has some intentions to get money because they're a business, right? But obviously they're doing it the wrong way. Correct. And I think a lot of people are uh, complaining a lot because it's EA. I think if it was a different company, you would yeah. see a lot less it's... like action around it. EA is like one of the most hated companies like in the world or whatever, in the US at least. Um, there's polls on that, right? They've been the most hated for years. Uh, I feel like if it was something like Blizzard, if Blizzard did it, there'd still be an uproar, but not nearly as big as this. My, hey, Pox, I have a question for you in regards to not just specifically EA, but companies that do this. Right now, I feel like gaming has gone, not always, but sometimes full sellout in the instance of EA and many other companies. What is your stance on companies choosing money over the fun of the game the game should always be fun first, in my opinion. What's Man. yours? So I 100% want to agree with what you said. Uh, like, I think that fun should be a priority because the thing about fun and money that a lot of developers don't realize is like, sure, you can release a game and, you know, you can sh kind of showcase what you want. People pay a, a big sum for it and then they're not really happy with it. So the developers make their initial money, but the player doesn't play anymore. So th it's done. Whereas you could release something as Cooter said, you know, like 20, 30 bucks, people have fun, they enjoy it, they like the game, so they buy what's coming next, right? I think that's a much better model. And I think that companies should, you know, relax a little bit and focus more on um, their player base than, you know, just selling it and then stopping. Because a lot, this happens a lot, unfortunately. I agree. What's your stance on all of this, Afro? It's tough, man. Like, a lot of people want me to get this game. People are like, oh, you got to get it. You got to get it. Literally, the other day, my buddy texted me, bro, you got to play it. It looks great. I just can't really get behind it. Should, uh, you know what? Star Wars, EA, they have enough money. But like you said, Cooters, it should have been free. And then people could have go buy whatever you want to buy. There's no reason that there's no reason that people should have had to pay for this game. Like, they're hurting for money? Like, I, I don't, I, I'm not buying that. I just, I don't, I don't know. I'm not buying that. If you're getting the license of Star Wars, Thank a.k.a. You, Disney, you Thank don't you. <laughs> really need money. You're I don't... trying to sell your product in a licensed, unfair way to customers that you know will buy it. That would be the story. It would be, oh my god, yo, Star Wars Battlefront 2 is free. That would be the story. Yeah. And people would go, like, you know, and buy it. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious, to because uh, I know Star Wars is a huge franchise, obviously, and right. people are very, very dedicated to it, right? People who don't even maybe like the show, they might like the characters or at least the atmosphere and the games behind it, right? Um, what do you think it would this kind of, like, reaction would be if instead of Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader being the unlockable characters, there is something like, uh, like Briggs or Lando or something, you know, that wasn't as iconic as Luke or, or Darth yeah. Vader. Do you think people would be like, oh, you know, uh, I can get Lando Carlisian or whatever if I pay money or pay extra, play extra time. But, you know, I don't really like him. Do you think it's like, I mean, I think they were definitely catering towards the fact that Darth Vader is an iconic character. Luke Skywalker is yeah. iconic. And that really was like, oh, we can get money from this because people want that, right? Um, I just interesting to think if they ended up using a character that was still known but not nearly as iconic, would, would people react in the same way? Put a, should put Jar Jar Binks up in the jump. That'd have been perfect. Unlock Jar Jar right now. Please. That'd be make all of your enemies the skin of Jar Jar Binks to yeah, succeed. Yeah. I mean, they definitely. <laughs> I definitely would say if they swapped around the characters, it wouldn't be as bad. But I still don't really like that they're trying to do that. You know, anyway. Um, but definitely, they shouldn't. They shouldn't be doing that to characters that people are playing. You know, like as a kid, I remember playing Star Wars Battlefront. You know, that's the character that I, when, if I want to get a Jedi man, you know, play for a little bit, unlock my Jedi, and go play it. So, let's segue this into the next thing that's a little bit news and drama. 
it's been around for a while now as a microtransaction in various sorts of games oh. and it's even been regulated in some countries we're going to talk right. loot boxes loot boxes are sometimes great for instance in like heroes of the storm you could truly play that game for free if you wanted to and lock all of your skins you can unlock skins for free in that game and then other games it becomes that i really don't know the percent chance of what i'm getting in these loot boxes what is it so if you guys don't know in china uh, the country itself, any of those loot boxes where you open up and you get various microtransactions that fit the theme of the box. For instance, in an Arctic loot box, you would get frost-related microtransactions in a generic game. In China, you must actually put the percentage chance to win what? You know, you have a 60% chance to get this fluff item and then 40% chance to get some of the more rare items and only like a 2% chance for the best. You know, that's a hypothetical scenario. Do you think that maybe this is something that should happen in other countries? And what is your stance on loot boxes overall? Let's start with you again, Cooters. Um, loot boxes have been a thing for me uh, where I know a lot of people hate them. Um, I enjoy them, but I mean, I think for the whole loot box, like seeing the percent chances of winning, I think that's great. I think the breakdown is, is uh, I think it's needed just so people know for sure, oh, this is like, you know, a 5% chance of getting this. It's not something where you're going to get it in three loot boxes, you know? But I think the problem with that is inherently people love to gamble. People like taking risks. I don't know why. It's just, I think it's a very psychological thing because it's the gratification. You get that kind of like dopamine release when you, you, you hit so, like a big winning. You're like, oh man, this is amazing. You feel so good about it. And you just keep on throwing money at it. Um, so I don't know. It, it's just a, to me, it's a form of gambling and yeah. um, you're not going to really win anything big from it most of the time and when you do it feels great but you usually end up spending all your money for it but i do like the breakdown idea where it's you have to show the percentages because i think there are times when people go to open a loot box they're thinking i should get this in you know five of them uh whereas if you look at the statistics you know it's definitely not going to happen most right likely. it's true the thing about loot boxes is it caters to the impulsive person you know like you said the gambler if you're not good with just holding back and feeling that adrenaline, if you find yourself to be spontaneous, good luck. Good luck. So, Pox, your stance on loot boxes. Man, so I'm, I'm going to go full negativity here. I apologize to everybody. <laughs> so, um, loot boxes, in my opinion, I think if the percentage, I think the percentage stance should be like 100% required. If you're putting, so, because some companies do it as real money, right? Some of them, it's a free to play model, and you know, you play for a little bit and you gamble. And some, it's you know locked behind microtransactions and stuff, but you pay real money, right? If you're putting real money into something, you should know what the odds are of getting something out of it because don't you want to know what you're spending money on to an extent? Uh, true. But the issue I have is if you don't put the, the chances on, which a lot of them don't, you get an item that's supposedly really rare and you're like, hey man, wow, I got this item. It's Dude, that's so rare. Yeah, man, I'm lucky. I should go buy some more. But you don't really know what the percentage chance is. If you saw that it was a 1% chance, maybe you'd buy one more and be like, okay, you know, it's done. But psychologically, you're like, I feel lucky. Put in another, put in another, put in another, and you just have no clue. And it's it's kind of like mean, man. It's it's like yeah. it's like cheating the system. Um, so I think that if they put percentage chances on loot boxes in general, it would make it a lot better. But I don't like putting any type of progression behind RNG. I think that's silly. So if loot boxes are strictly kept to cosmetics, I think that's usually okay. So what do you think, Afro? No, I mean, most definitely, man. It's got to, that's what I was going to say. It's cosmetics only. Cosmetics. Like, I think it's, the issue I have with gambling in any type of game where you open up a box and get something is when you could then resell that thing you just opened. That's the thing on some type of internal or third-party marketplace. Like, that's, that's the issue that I have with loot boxes. Like, I guess and that's more fits in more in the realm of, like, CSGO and even PUBG skins. You know what I mean? You could H1Z1 skins, things like that. Like, I know loot box, you think more Overwatch in some ways, but, you know, as you see it in Call of Duty now, where people are gaining XP because they watch somebody open a loot box with a rare thing. Okay. Cool. Yep. I'm like, cool. Can I segue from there? I'll okay, give you this yeah. mic right back. Why are companies giving out free loot boxes to streamers? So streamers That's open up and get excited, but they don't have to pay. No, I am yeah. a streamer. Everyone here is a streamer partner. All that good stuff. Now, there's nothing really? wrong with giving away stuff to advertise, but you're giving away a gambling thing knowing that it's going to sell. And I think that's kind of shady. I think right. that's real shady. Right, right. Nothing right. wrong with getting free stuff, but you know the people watching are going to be like, those loot boxes, though. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think uh, <laughs> when it comes to, you know, giving out those free things, uh, it's really on the streamer to kind of make sure people know, you know, I got this for free. This is, you know, a paid promotional thing. I didn't pay anything for it. Z uh, actually, uh, not to, you know, really shout out people, but Ziggy did um, a few of these loot boxes for PUE, and he's been really, really upfront about, hey, I would never buy this many loot boxes. You know, I got 30 free loot boxes from, from GGG to open for you guys. I would never buy this many. Like, you're going to get so many doubles. It's not worth the money at all. I'd mm -hmm. only buy maybe, like, three to five if you want to buy any. Uh, and if you don't want to buy any at all, it's not. Really, it might not be worth it because you might not like any of the items. Mm -hmm. I think people being really upfront about that, uh, especially if they're getting things for free instead of being like, oh, man, look at this. I got so many good items. Uh, at least be upfront and be like, hey, if you buy this many, you're going to you're gonna get a lot of doubles. You're going to get a lot of things you don't want. It's it's going to be a waste of money. Um, I think that's a good kind of angle. Um, obviously, you know, or maybe the company won't like that, but I mean, uh, I think it's kind of the responsibility, though, if you're pushing a product to, to let people know, hey, you know, you should be responsible with your money. You know, you right, shouldn't just right. like, blow it all. It's important, just, to be honest. It's so sketch to me that the whole loot box skin selling, like I sold my first, get my first skin sold a while back. And I like, when someone bought it, I just like felt kind of grimy about it. Like, man, someone really wanted this cool cosmetic thing. And it's like, who's winning out of this situation <laughs> when it comes to all this uh, randomness? But uh, loot boxes. What happened to just regular old video game? <laughs> what happened to Game Genie? That's what I want. Game, give me my game, extra, game, shark. Give me my, game, give me my game <laughs> shark and my Game Genie and game extra, shark. extra stuff in different ways. <laughs> you know, like creative Minecraft was one of the best things because you know you're playing a cheat mode, but it's okay because you're by yourself. And with... So it works. You're right. 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 What did you want to say, Kudos, about these? I actually boxes? wanted. I mean, I don't know if this would be a big uh, a big discussion, but I think it's something to really think about. Um. So recently, uh, I think just just two days ago, uh, they had the Golden Joystick Award winners, you know, announced and everything. I don't know if you guys follow that, but there's been kind of some murmur about the fact that uh, not, you know, spoilers for you guys if you don't know, uh, PUBG won or PUBG won a PC Game of the Year. Now, I don't. How do you guys feel about a game that's not even released? It's in early access. It was nominated for one of the best games of the year, and it won. Like, do you guys feel that games in beta or pre-production should even be able to be nominated? Like, how do you can feel I, about can that? I, can I speak on this mainly? Yeah, this totally. Is you play you, it. This is you, man. Sweet. Short and sweet. Dumb. <laughs> okay? It's my opinion, okay? It's my opinion and not that of my employer. Dumb. What? <laughs> like, I, just I, think... saw this, I just saw this really cool movie trailer. It's not going to go win an Oscar. Like, it's like, it shouldn't be able to go get an Oscar for a movie trailer. Like, it's like... I get it. A lot of people spent a lot of money on it. A lot of people are streaming it. There's just tournaments going on. I play it every day and I love it. But dumb. They don't. It's not necessary. There's so many other games out there that should have won it. I just. I don't. I know. totally agree. I think if they want it's a game of the year in beta. Game of the year. Yeah. In every new... game is an alpha beta. <laughs> it's one of those things where I feel like they really pulled Man. the award away from potential, you know, prospects that that could have definitely taken their place it's it's really unfair in my opinion especially you know for a game that's not even released yet right right it's just like a thing where it's like oh we're in pre-production i mean wait until they're actually released and then nominate them for the next year or you know they miss the boat really they should yeah. be able to to just sneak in there like that gaming has gone full out so out. like it's not going to change it'll always be here and that's okay you know that's that's business that's business and in the instance of pre-orders and games in early access and especially winning awards yeah i mean what's early it's access award. anymore this right. bit, game's been in early access for five years that clearly aren't early access anymore mm -hmm. we could talk about that forever so i agree with you it's dumb. It dumb. dumb i just i just don't like i mean i think it's another thing where you know developers or companies can think hey we won an award we won seven you know guinness world records and, and people say oh you have these bugs in your game it's like Oh well, it's, it's just it's data. just early access. Yeah. Like we don't need yeah. to iron those out yet. It's like, come on, <laughs> if you're gonna be nominated for this stuff and winning awards, like you should have a yeah. ironed out, you know, super premium game at this point. Hiding behind be. the indie game logo. Oh, we're just right. indie. Yep. Right. People Back use off. they use the whole beta and early access as an excuse to be honest, and they hide behind it. Yep. If you can win an award based off it, your game in early access better be the most polished game of like 2017. One thing I'll say, okay, I've played this game since early alpha. I've never played a game that has been so quick to make changes and updates. I'll say that. 
So great good development as, team. As, as, yeah, as small as their development team is, and they they call them was it uh, a couple streamers they call them uh, blue hole landscaping because it's like they care more about what it looks like than how it actually. It's called blue hole. It's a it's a publisher, but uh, they call it blue hole landscaping. They care more about what it looks like than the actual mechanics behind the game. But like I have never seen a company like you look at like Daybreak, which is the same type of game H one Z one. The parallels between releases of stuff like you know new updates, they're pretty spot on with it. But that being said, that's not game of the year. Early access capital. It's, it's, yeah, right? Like, this early access game of the year? Sure. Hey, guys, this episode one is actually early access. So if we screw anything up, we're early access episodes. <laughs> yeah, don't so worry. All apologies, but we're still yeah. hiding and gated behind this early access uh, state yeah. of RPG. So with that said, let's move on to some Q&A. If you guys oh, don't know, this is the Q&A part. I got some questions ready to go here in our google doc if you guys would like to participate in the question and answer this is where your chance to ask anybody on the panel any question just type at xenus genius in chat and put your question and direct it at which caster it is to i'm assuming all pubg is going to be for afro so <laughs> let's start this off we have creative deception says what is your favorite video game and why for all broadcasters so who wants to take the reins on this one i'll start so my favorite video game of all time since 2003 has been Warcraft 3 Frozen Throne custom games. Uh, you get the flexibility of doing whatever it is that you want to do. You could play a sandbox game. You could play Go Fish. You could play a first person shooter. You're free to do whatever you want. All you got to do is buy the battle chest. So that's pretty much about it. That's like my, <laughs> that's my off little thing that I always, I was playing earlier. So, What's yours, Afro? Favorite game of all time? Uh, I'd say GTA. If I really did really sit and think about Which it, one? All the Grand Theft Autos. So you're going I mean, series here. You're going to take the, the series. It's the be- I mean, if it's the best one, then the most recent one, because every time I come up with a new one, it's better than better. Just I just I've had so many idle hours just sitting there, not on stream, just walking around, listening to other people's NPCs conversations, just like living in the stupid world, you know. Yo, check it. GTA it's, Three. It's GTA 3, they had the electronic radio, I forgot what it was called, but I remember burning a CD, oh my God. going on Kazaa to find <laughs> that radio station, to burn that, to put it in my car. Great oh. soundtrack. Kazaa Light? Did you use Kazaa Light or no? I don't know. Dude, we ain't That's going that funny, yeah. That rabbit hole has already been open. I ain't so digging no funny. more. <laughs> but no, I'd, say, I'd say GTA just because like, I feel like I, I it's one of the biggest all-time selling video games of all. It's one of the biggest video games sold of all time or some set like that came out mm. like a month ago or something it's just i love it I play it forever kudos what's your favorite game Man, it's one of those things where i don't think it's i can politics. i could i can't give like a favorite game of all time because i like to i like to break them up by genre and also by console a lot of times so you know like nintendo like this game this game for you know for playstation right, like this right, right. but i would say you know the the games that really stick out to me that kind of uh, maybe shaped like the way i i View games and how I play them and how I enjoy them. Um, I'm gonna name three games. Uh, the first game is an arcade game. I'm sure you guys have played this. Do you guys remember the six player X Men game? Like, in oh, arcade? Yeah. yeah, that's gotta be one of my favorite games because I always like co op games, uh, like Gauntlet Legends and The Simpsons and uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade. Uh, the six player X Men game, it was amazing because I've never seen that before. Um, and then after that, I would say for first person shooter, Counter Strike. I played Counter Strike competitively, so when I was really young. Uh, so that's been like my all time favorite FPS. And then the one game that really opened up my eyes for like that kind of massive multiplayer uh, MMO type of game where I didn't even know that stuff existed would, was Ragnarok Online. Played that for years. What's that now? Ragnarok Online. It's like I've, kind of, it's a weeb game. It's a weeaboo game. I've That's seen the it's title. An anime. It's it's amazing. It's an amazing never, game. Super Korean s grindy like MMO, okay. but it was it was fun. It was a great game. Hmm. So um, for me, it's Earthbound for Super Nintendo. That game taught me how to treat people. I mean, still took me a while because I don't know how to treat people perfectly. But watching those four kids save the world, putting themselves in a a robot so they could go back in time to take out the evil entity that creates fear and pain and sorrow inside That's of your head known bro. as Gygus. That's now deep, that bro. is a game for me, and that is what is row two, column four, Earthbound. Nice. Cannot forget well, that. That's what, okay, well, then I didn't know. Okay, there we go. Was well, your favorite character it. Ness in uh, Super Smash Brothers then, or no? No, Pox plays the hell out of him. Yeah, I play Ness. 
I'm Link in Smash Brothers. That's my best. And then wait, I could play Lucario like a mother. Mm. Which which what are we talking about for Link? Link in Smash Four. That's the one we got. We're gonna bring it to Pack South. Yeah, we're going to Pack South with that shit. I'm gonna throw down. You're gonna get your butts beat by me and Pox. Just saying. I'm terrible about the old ones. I only played the 64 version. I played Ness in 64, and in Melee. Yeah. And Smash Four. And Four. Yeah. Hell? Oh yeah, I played him through the whole series. Yeah. Man, I love him. you're he's, good he's, with him. In Smash he's a good. Man, he's the most annoying character. Well, not that really. back throw. We won't. Op- we won't open up the Smash now. Oh, so. yeah, so <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. That, that's like that's the side. Yeah, we'll play the... Smash. Anyway. All right. Next Q and A. Um, from Zan Murphy. What RPG do you find to be the biggest letdown recently, and why? So, who wants to take this one? Hmm. Who's got the brass ones? I have. I have a couple. I don't know about the most let down. I I will go into. Oh, oh man. Okay, mm-hmm. I got one. All right, Revelation Online was a game that I was looking at uh, a couple months ago. So it's just you know one of your standard MMORPGs that's coming out. Uh, I don't remember if it was being ported over or not, but they had this system in it that partially killed their game. So as you're playing through the game and you you know you're leveling through, you get to like level thirty or so, right? Now, the game is in, like, beta, you know, it's being ported over. It's in three different languages. I don't know why. It's in English, partially translated in English, and then two other languages. So, like, a quest would switch languages as you're playing it, which doesn't make sense. Like, you're using Google Translate. You're like, okay, so it's in, I don't know, like, I'm just going to throw out a language here, Taiwanese. And then it would go to, like, Russian. Like, it literally, they took part of another port over that they did and took it. So, it's two completely different languages, plus, like uh english and it's like what like what's happening That's and then crazy. throughout the questing you get to this part where um you know it, it's advertised like there's some grinding inside and, and and some stuff right so you would uh you would go ahead and grind and you hit a limit where like you can't you can't grind anymore and the second you hit that limit you actually become allied with the enemies and you literally cannot play with your friends like you'll have to actually fight them because you're allied with the enemy yeah you hit like max daily reputation or and you literally cannot even attack them they are 100 percent allied garbage heap so after after that i just stopped playing the game and i literally don't even know what happened to it after that i'll I'll pass the mic real quick to you guys i just have two things to say d3 (laughs) next (laughs) what do you think afro what's your uh bro i mean let down rpg I swap around between RPGs way too much to even get behind stuff, man. But like, I guess I could say from a general, just uh, from what I've been seeing, um, I'm a little pissed off that Elder Scrolls Online didn't do better than it was supposed to. Like mm-hmm. now they got Morrowind now. It's like, I, I was, those, those are the RPGs that I care about the most. I went King's Quest and I cared a little bit about Diablo, even though you just kind of give it a little stab at the three, <laughs> which I get it. Um, and then trying to get these new games in, I'm just like, I. I it's tough for me. I go back and forth. I loved everything that had to do with anything Elder Scrolls related, but like just online stuff now. I expected a lot out of it, and I was let down. Mainly because I played a lot of the Skyrim multiplayer mods, which is like seven people. So I, you, you guys are here. here. Skyrim's coming out for mobile. It's what? also coming out for no. <laughs> but would you <laughs> be like, surprised? What? It's on Switch now, isn't it? <laughs> that instant life. It's on Switch. It's on Switch. Yeah, it's on Switch, right? <laughs> But no, oh. that would be me. I expected a little bit more out of it, but I also go back. I, I I don't stay consistent enough playing with one particular game. So usually the letdown is me not playing enough. Man, you got you baited. I did. All right, it's cool. Cooters, what's yours? I don't know. Like I think I've been blessed with just good games recently that I've been playing. Um, because let, if I had to choose one, um, IRL man. <laughs> because <laughs> let. <laughs> IRL, dude, IRL is a whole world. We don't even need to touch that one. Yeah. You know how many DMs I get? I get people DM me all the time. With, hey, man, did you check out this channel? It's really, really bad. I'm good, man. Good. Uh, this one's directed at Pox. It's by a guy named Ski. He says, why are you so obsessed with the Power Rangers video game? Okay, so I have a, a Super it's Nintendo, fun. right? It's a Super Nintendo Power Rangers game that I have. God. And I used to play it all the time when I was a little kid. I learned to play video games before I learned to walk and everything else. It was the first thing I did. That's what my mom told me. And I used to play video games and my mom used to make fun of me. 
And based off of the, the sound of the game, she would make different noises. I don't know why. My mom and older sister would always make fun of me when I play video games. And she would go like, Wazik, Wazik. I don't know what is with that sound. But supposedly I'd get super triggered as like a, a two-year-old kid. Like I get super mad and throw a tantrum because my mom would make fun of me when I was playing this Power That's Rangers so game. So. That was a cool story, man. Did you see that new Power Rangers game That's that came out stuff. like not that long ago? No, I haven't the followed it. Oh, the new movie that came out not that long ago with the fake Rita Repulsa. Uh, you know when Twitch does their marathons? Uh, the only one I was like front to back watching was Power Rangers. It oh, was just yeah, so man. great, dude. Actually, <laughs> wait, there's another Power Rangers game. Sorry, I think this is a different game. Wait, wait, wait. The first game I ever played with damage text was on PlayStation 1, and it was a Power Rangers game. That's right, I remember. Wow. I, I saw a commercial. PG. Yeah, I saw a commercial with, like, a guy, like, a Power Ranger, like, punched a boss, and it said, like, nine. I was like, oh, like, what? I was like, Mom, I need that game. She's like, this is violent. You don't want I'm like, Mom, he, the Power Ranger, he did, like, this attack, and it hurt the guy, and I was like, I need it, Mom. I need this game. The number next to yeah, it. Yeah, I was like, the know. number nine. damage text. Nine. <laughs> All right. I think it's time we go on to the happy, wholesome part here in our state of RPG. This is where we get to, to know our guest stars. You know, they took our time, took their time to come here on our show. And this is a soapbox segment where you get to know Cooters and Afro. So the soapbox. Cooters, as always, kick it off. Who are you? What do you do? Where can we find you? Uh, Cooter. So I basically have been streaming for, I don't know, I think it's been uh, about three and a half years. Uh, I've been partnered for about, a, uh, oh, I've been partnered for 20 months. That's my longest sub right now. So it's been quite the time uh, on Twitch. I started streaming Diablo 3. That was my first game I started streaming. Uh, I then moved over to, what did I play after that? Hearthstone. I got Legend in November of 2015. Um, I then went to uh, a little bit of Overwatch back when it was like in super beta, like friends and family beta, played that for a bit. And then Zeno actually, you know, showed up on my channel a few times, there'd be some hosts and said, hey, you should play, you should play Path of Exile. And I was like, eh, I don't know, I don't know. And he, he, I think he like really prodded me for about, I want to say a few months, like two, three months, four months. <laughs> and eventually I was like, all right, December of 2015, I was like, let's do it, you know? Had my first stream, I had, uh, you know, Zeno hosted me, I had way more viewers than I ever had. Um, second stream, Zeno was on, he went on a cruise, actually, and I was thinking like, oh man, I don't have the host anymore, I'm going to be flying blind, this is going to be terrible. And I still actually had a pretty good stream for, um, you know, the rest of that, and then is pretty much, I don't want to say smooth sailing, but, um, you know, it kind of took off from there, uh, went on a podcast, uh, the, the previous State of the Exile podcast, um, grew a lot of followers and, and viewers from that, got partnered off of PoE. And now I've been kind of like trying to branch back into uh, more variety stuff. I mean, I play PoE obviously as my main game. I'll usually start off with PoE, you know, on my main streams where I start with PoE for a gaming stream and then I'll switch to like Odyssey. I'll switch to South Park. I've been playing that. Uh, Fractured Butthole, really good game. If you guys haven't played that game, amazing game. Excuse um, me, uh, what's the name of the game again? Fractured Butthole. Oh, Fractured interesting. Butthole. Butthole. Fra Fractured Butthole. But whole exactly so i do that and i uh i do those games and then i also kind of uh dabble in i do creative streams i'll do a cooking stream i try to do around um two about two a month right now is what i'm aiming for so every other week on the weekends i'll try to do a cooking stream um i sometimes theme them sometimes it's like you know maybe like a low sodium type of recipe or a low fat low protein because my dad actually has some dietary restrictions i've done like you know uh, vegetarian gluten-free so stuff like that, or maybe like a modest budget type type of thing where, you know, if you're in college or something, you need like a cheap thing that maybe isn't that great for you, but it's cheap. Uh, I'll do stuff like that. And I've also been now kind of branching out towards some IRL. My IRL isn't uh, like stick a microphone in your face and be like, who are you? Like, entertain us. Uh, it's more of just me going out with my daily life, you know, walking around, just exploring things, kind of getting like a little bit of exercise because, you know, as a streamer, you're sitting down all the time uh try to like get that walk in and stuff like that and and just kind of enjoy it with chat and um yeah as irl you start to learn how bad na internet is it's really terrible um and it's expensive like it is i think irl honestly is one of the most expensive like investments for streaming like you would think you know sitting down playing a game with the microphone and the, the computers and 
man, IRL is hard. It's just super, super hard to to figure out to get a good steady stream, like you know, a high bit rate, mm-hmm. fast speeds, paying for data, and it's just it's insane. Uh, but it's fun because it's different. You know, I like to kind of keep the streams uh, not just for my my viewers, but for myself, just kind of a, a variance in a way. You know, gaming and and cooking and IRL. Um, I feel like you know you when you get too stuck on one grind, you might kind of get bored or, or burnt out. Right. So I like to change things up once in a while. Nice. You know, I think IRL streaming for you is you have the actor, you have that broadcaster voice. Watching you do the the race with Havoc, oh, you had right. a lot of success I there. I forgot to I forgot to uh, mention that I do. Um, if any of the people in the chat are PUE fans or have been watching PUE, uh, Havoc and Noogie have been doing like these. Um, I like to call them unsanctioned or like you know unofficial races. Uh, you know, not a GGG based one. They just make up their own things and they do community type of like feedback and whatnot. And I didn't get into the races until very, very late into like season one of like, you know, the community driven races. And um, I did one race. I got invited. Uh, I did a race and I got like, you know, I called it amateur hour. No offense to anyone who was participating. Uh, we were like, the, <laughs> I would this? say amateur hour. we were the worst people. I kept on saying, man, this is amateur hour, man. This is like <laughs> two hours to do this race. And everyone else was like an hour and 30, hour and 15 uh, or lower. But um, I got second place. Um, so I was like, oh, you know, amateur hour, second place. Really not much to brag about. But, you know, I really keyed in. I was like, hey, man, during the interview, they always do interviews at the end. I was like, I really like casting. I really like commentating. So that's what I'm really here for. And uh, they put me in. You know, they're like, put me in, coach. Let me, you know, try it out. And uh, I did pretty well the first time. You know, second time, they're like, we want you back. So I pretty much did uh, a lot of the finals um, with, you know, Noogie and Havoc and, and Rise. So uh, if you guys heard my voice, maybe you don't know me by face. You know me by voice. Uh, I do, like, for the PUA stuff. Um, season two, I don't know when it is, but I'm super excited because I love casting. That's something I do want to do professionally. So, um, very nice. Hopefully, that goes somewhere. You know, so. sky's the limit. Why wouldn't nice. you? Nice. And on that okay. topic, I actually have a few clips from Cooters here to show. Uh, one of them's pretty pretty funny. So, one of them is uh, here from from PUBG. So here you guys go. PUBG. 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 <laughs> Thank you for the correction, Afro. Here we go. Here we go. I can't see. Would you like to give a commentary over what's happening, Cooters, in this clip? <laughs> I can't watch my own No, it's okay, you're fine, you're fine. I was just Pretty kidding. Much, uh, I can't see. We just kind of dropped the you know, down, and like God. some guy was trying to run over my partner. I ran over with the other guy's partner, and then we kind of like our bug. We got a buggy fight, Where and we ended up getting stuck. And I just pushed this guy across the map like so far, and I didn't want to stop because I didn't want him to get away, you know. So I just kept on plowing into this guy like forever. We've already gone 700 kilometers. I can see on the map. Right yeah, now. It, it went oh forever. It just, we just stuck. We just kept on going. We're like, you know what? I can't slow down, man. We can't let this guy get away. Like, you know, once you you oh. the guy, you can't let him get out. So. <laughs> He's trying to drive off of you. So this good. is a turn into a brutal fist fight here. We do. He he finally figures out. Hey, I, man, got him. I can't do anything. He jumps out and we said, "All right, let's do it." Man, I have I have to say, boom! You got to go for that big headshot, like you know, slam. So As a person who doesn't off. who doesn't ever play like battle royale style games, this looks absolutely hilarious to see. Like in a game where it's life or death, but all of a sudden it's life versus the car in front of me versus the person driving it. Let's see yeah. what happens with this. I think it's one of these a... things where you know you can really take it as it is. You can get really competitive, or you can just have a fun time, right? Like mm-hmm. I feel like if this is a more competitive thing, people would be like, "Oh, f that guy. Let's just go. You know, let's go get loot. Let's get gear. Let's just get get geared up and go for late game." No, we're like we're the type where we see someone we're gonna stick to it until the death death do right. his part you know it's gonna <laughs> yeah. either be like him or us so so with yeah. that we're gonna move on to the mario odyssey clip or super mario odyssey clip so here we go boys oh i like this music so this is what i'm talking about the super mario butters three uh <laughs> kind Mario's of like watch that it. music this is the thing where you're supposed to memorize the picture of a goomba and recreate it Okay. And what? I thought I was really, I was like, dude, I'm really good at memorization. I can 21. do this super easy. Okay. And I was like, I got 21, 21. points. I was like, are you kidding me? 21 points? Yes. I like that Goomba, dude. That oh, great. man, I didn't notice there was other parts oh, for man, other things. Like, off. Mario was in there. I didn't realize. And then when you see, like, the actual picture, when I restart it, I'm like, oh, 
Oh, man. <laughs> Dude, it looks like a potato we head. Were, I was way off, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking at it like kind of like naked with nothing on it. It looks like a Mr. Potato Head. Oh, yeah, Goomba. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so, I that's awesome. I thought for awesome. sure the I eyebrows. I, like, I, got the, I got the eyebrows. I got the eyes. Let me, let me see this I made him the most derpy Goomba <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> Look at that Goomba. I would want to jump right on his head if I was playing Super Mario Odyssey and a Goomba walk up to me like that. Oh, my God. I would God, jump right on his face, what? man. What did you think that was? Did you think the mouse was a nip? Alf was a nose? Like, what did you I, th I thought, like, you were supposed to use all the pieces. I didn't know they were tricking you. So I was like, oh, well, there was a mouth. I got to put the mouth where the mouth is. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I guess so. But it was weird when he said, tw I thought I was like, oh, I'll get, like, you know, I won't get, like, the 70 points you need. I'll get, like, 55, 60, and it was, like, 21. I'm like, are you kidding me? And I realized, like, half of it was just totally wrong. Like, the eyebrows were wrong. The mouth was not there. And what's the little, uh, like, thing on his head? <laughs> that thing starts What is there. that? That, that oh, it starts, starts there. Oh, yeah, all right, all right, yeah. All right. it connects to his like eyebrows. Big, like his mouth, he looks so derpy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the looks eyes so were derpy. too far and like you know too close. That's how. It was, ugh, man. It looks so happy. He was bad. I still gotta get this. I gotta get this. Do we have any more clips to show, or is that it? Uh, I think um, I just took two from each person. I didn't want it to be like super cool. long. If that's cool. Oh, cool. Yeah. Is uh, I mean, if you hit up the clips, I have the clips of you know uh, a lot of a lot of PoE stuff, but I have like Fortnite and PUBG and you know just all that stuff. So you just have to kind of go through them. Unfortunately, Twitch doesn't uh, capture the game correctly all the time, so you can't search by yeah. game to find it's all true. of it. But mm -hmm. but you know, pick and choose. Um, Before we move on to uh, Afro Soapbox, where can we find you? You know, what's your Twitch channel? Your Twitch, YouTube, Twitter? Twitch dot, dot TV slash Cooters. Obviously, C O O T E R Z. Uh, YouTube.com slash Cooters also works. Sub to me there. I've been actually, yeah, I forgot. I do some YouTube stuff. I have it in a bit, but I usually do vlogs when I go to conventions. I do daily vlogs. Not daily vlogs, sorry. I do in the life vlogs. I used to do more, but I kind of like got a little lax on that. But I do unboxings. I used to open up Pokemon cards. I'll still do that, like real, you know, legit Pokemon cards. Like, like these guys like pokemon cards so do uh do that stuff um i love pokemon so it's a big thing for me um just yeah just a lot of variety stuff there um and then twitter is actually at cooters underscore na so uh twitter.com slash cooters underscore na um but yeah pretty much my main stuff instagram i have instagram slash cooters i don't like post much there but i have pictures of like food there's a lot of food, food. if you guys want food go to my instagram uh, if you want, and there's like one picture of my cat or two pictures of my cat. Wow, only one? What the heck? That's messed up. This would be a daily cat. I, I just, you know, it's weird. Like, I just don't take a lot of pictures of my cat. I mean, I take mental pictures, but not so much. Wow, mental <laughs> pictures. Nice excuse. We're segueing. Take a mental That's picture of this Goomba. Right there. Soapbox taken. Afro, it's yours. What's mental up? Mental pictures. I'm still looking at this Goomba on the screen. That's scared me right now. <laughs> but no, um, yeah, my name is Jim. Everyone calls me Afro. Yeah, like, Attack of the Afro is my. I guess my full Twitch name, full everything name. But everyone just ends up calling me Afro. It's easier. And I guess it's kind of the first thing people see when they when they look at me anyway. So, you know, the guy with the Afro, the guy with the big hair. But I've been streaming on Twitch for, geez, we're at maybe a year, a year and a, a year and seven months. But I've been watching since Justin TV. I'll tell you that right now. I remember, I remember stacking stacking books and put my phone on top to try and stream call of duty like way back when like a badass you know the coolest guy in the world but um since then i kind of like fell back in the whole oh i want to you know stream thing and i started just like doing call of duty youtube videos all obviously throwing knife related stuff like using physics and ricocheting knives off walls to get people as opposed to playing it like a real person but um like i like to play a lot of variety games honestly after i got off the whole call of duty grind uh got into pc finally got a pc i started just i didn't even even know steam was a thing i had no idea steam was a thing and the immensity of the games in that like i'm an og pc guy like i'm playing king's quest so like i'm a little Damn. behind on the, that's you know, a name i know did I'm you play doom behind. too did you play doom oh yeah oh, there yeah. we go all right you're yeah. og pc gamer I'm like, I'm like 30 something years old man i'm playing for a long, same long age, time man. Yeah, same age that's so, it I mean, just recently, you know, with streaming in the last year and a half, just the amount of games I've been playing. Like, when I first started playing, streaming on PC, I was playing Dead by Daylight, playing a bunch of random games. Now it's very hard for me to, like, stay in with what I want to play because I just find cool stuff. Like, yesterday I was playing some random game by three uh, students in Germany, 
I saw their game on Steam it was for three bucks, and I was like, let's play it. I'll play it. I'll go from playing a game that has you know a three hundred person team behind it to a three person team behind it, just because I like variety. And if it's a cool game, I'll play it. You know, I don't know. Just how it is. Nice. I, I like, like how it. the kitty cat just kind of flew by there. Yeah. 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 That. So, so what do you do? Um. So obviously you're playing a lot of shooters and you're doing a lot of RPGs. Yeah, or anything else yeah. you're doing? Something else we can feel with you? You're on your soapbox, man. This is I like mean, you like me, you. I, I'm on I'm on YouTube a lot. I have a, a an unhealthy addiction to Twitter, honestly. But the whole thing, like you know, with starting to stream and game, and it was like I went from not having many people on a console game with to getting on Twitter and social media, and like the community has been the biggest thing that's been like I guess a, a driving force behind like why I love playing games even more so now you know before it was like you know you got to have people on your friends list now you just reach out to somebody on social in some way and you get access to discover brand new games that are dope like i don't know how many games i just didn't even know existed at the oh po po right yeah. oh god po. Po. <laughs> po. one of them yeah, the game yeah. we play is po yeah, yeah. edgar yeah. allen in in the flesh but it's like i would have never have known about that you know there wasn't a connection behind it so it's like i feel like i'm just like a little baby boy just still learning you know being a year and a half into i guess streaming but it was like i was super happy into you know building websites playing video games and i figured i'm not going to just watch on justin i want to start creating stuff and then i just kind of went down the rabbit hole of working for different digital companies got a job with twitch like maybe six months ago but i continue to play the internet video games a lot every day i mean almost it's tough i work i, I run on california time sometimes but when I get home, if I got time, I'm getting on and I'm playing a ver- plus PUBG because I have to get it in at least once, once a stream. Oh, awesome. Now, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this right now, and usually I don't bring attention to this kind of thing. Uh, you just said that you worked for Twitch for about the past six months, and you've been streaming now for over a year, year and mm-hmm. seven months, you said. Mm-hmm. With that said, you're still going for the path of partnership despite the fact that you have that wrench next to your name. You are a Twitch oh, employee. Yeah, man. I mean, you're yeah. still doing the grind, the real grind no different than anyone else and i have a a deep respect for someone like you doing this i'm not gonna i don't know man like i don't want to i don't like that in any way for something for me to be on a particular path and have some other outside variable help me get there I, it's not i mean i'll be honest i can just like many other employees on twitch you could just go flip a switch in your partner but it's like i just don't i don't think it's appropriate I think it's appropriate, and that's like that's like what we were talking about earlier. It's like a loop. That's like an easy loop box. Yeah, right man, there. that's EA really... loop box. Pay some Come microtransactions. On, Here's a partner. I'm not you want to earn it, right? You're like, you like you want to earn that. Yeah, yeah. And like, I feel like it's just. It, yeah. I don't know. Honestly, what I do at my at my job, anyway, too far into it, I deal with like numbers and I deal with people, and I understand you know what people are dealing with when they're trying to reach a certain numbers and the, the amount of people that are grinding every day. And creating amazing content, I would hate to be like, oh, look, I'm partnered. And like, I'm just, you know, just kind of flip the switch. You cheesed it. You earn it for yourself. No, that's, Good for you. That's a totally, humble strategy. Got to grind it out. Totally understandable, man. I like that. On the topic of, yeah. of earning, can you tell me why in this oh, PUBG boy. clip, before I play it, why you like your crossbow so much Dude. that you earned the skill for? Can you what explain the mechanics it's, of how crossbows work in sure. PUBG? It's the stealth aspect of it in general, man. It's like you get, you find a bundle of five, you'll get 15 bolts, and you have to be extremely selective on where you're going, what you're doing, um, and when you're going to take a shot. So, like in this scenario, like I usually sleep with Shanky, it's a really big area. I like getting high up and getting shots from, get shots from high up. I just, and the leading, the reason I like it too is the fix behind leading. So, I guess from here to that tree on the left, on the far left, that's about 100 kilometers. So I, you can kind of determine and lead your shots based on where things are on the map. So it's, there's not much drop to this, but once you go over 100 kilometers, it drops significantly. So it's been, it's just fun to me. I like to play games in a different way. I don't know, like my YouTube channel is just basically nonstop crazy crossbows, like getting people between multiple windows. Like, I don't know, man, it's just silly. I can't. 100 meters. 100, 100. meters. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it's cool. I mean, it could be 100 miles. That's a really far shot, though. It's going to be some crazy bullet drop with that. <laughs> Start yeah, aiming. Come off <laughs> Aim straight up like this. All right, so let's take a look at this clip here, just so people yeah, yeah. can kind of understand this. But we had a vehicle coming down the road. They could be 100 kilometers. Let's just, let's just lie and say it. They're going to be leaving. It'll be better. That's right, baby. Come down the road, and then everyone else come running out towards it. Here it comes. Oh! <gasps> 
That shot, though. Oh my god, I got him. I got him. Yo! Mm. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Holy See, that's shit. that's why that's, so nasty, that's right? why that I wanted him to explain. Yeah, the mechanics of the crossbow. Yeah, it's it's it's. I was I was lucky enough that it went from a hundred meters to a little bit closer, so I didn't have to risk too much. But I don't know, man. The whole what the whole... was that, dude? That was a moving car. Like, get, dude, stop being humble. Hype that. There's man. there's other ones. <laughs> I tried. I want to slow it down at some point too to like see like did I did I shoot it before that actual tower? Yeah, I did. That was like the, that was some physics, dude. Like so much fun, man. You know that meme where that someone's trying to figure out the volume of half a cone and it's the lady <gasps> staring off. That was you right there. Dude. Like what? <laughs> There's uh, it's it's fun, man. I just didn't really expect to get that one at all because like the reason I like this game too. Sure, it's a loot fest and it gets boring. But it's, there's a lot of game theory in it. Like, I am here, but there are other people who are potentially here and there. So I just heard a shot from over there. So I know, based on where the gas is, they're going to have to take this trek. So I have to, like, you have to think of what other people are potentially doing and use that to your advantage. So I just, like, knew people were going to be in this area. I was like, let's just see if they come through the main road. You never know. But check it all out on YouTube as well. <laughs> just saying. But uh, no, I am uh, Attack of the Afro on everywhere on the internet. Attackoftheafro.com, Attack of the Afro on Twitch. I don't Instagram as much. I do though sometimes, usually when I do conferences or I'm traveling. Um, yeah. Sweet. I'll yeah, post social me. media here in chat, and I appreciate it. it. I want to say both Cooters and Afro, we're, co we're coming out the outro here. The happy feels. Thanks for coming in. That crossbow shot was a good way to end some. <laughs> we do have one thing to one up you with. Oh, boy. oh I gotta see this. Okay. So, I gotta see uh, this. this is a this is a picture of my cat. I'm sure you guys are aware with uh, Mr. Mini K here. He likes to uh, guest appear every so often on the stream. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna give you guys a little example of Mr. Resident Sleeper K. You guys tell me how you feel about him in chat. Kiki. Chillin', straight chillin', man. <laughs> He's a big car. Straight chillin'. <laughs> Lazy nickel. Yeah. I want cats so bad. All three of you have cats. I've got nothing behind. I mean, most cats aren't like that, from my experience. So. <laughs> most cats aren't like this. <laughs> Mini K was trained by this yeah. one. Extreme close up. What are you staring at right now? <laughs> That's basically what he's like. What are you staring at right now? It's so good. Yeah, see, there's Oscar as well. Oscar yeah, is yes. Mini K's big brother. I mean, this is the closest pet I have. Is this like little mini Bob Ross? That's it. Mini Bob Ross. Hey, that's pretty Not good too, though. Start, man. It's a that's start. about all I've got. <laughs> all right, guys. <laughs> So that pretty much sums up our episode one um, of uh, State of RPG. Do you have anyone have anything else to add before we wrap it up? Or are we good? Yeah, sure. I'm just going to go to the celestial being as the sun. See you later, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah. So thank, thank you. you yeah. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I apologize. We had a few uh, malfunctions here and there. I'm still working around this. The next episodes uh, will be, you know, the performance will go up and up and up. So thank you so much, Cooters. Uh, and Afro Attack of the Afro for coming on today as our guests. It was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves as well. Uh, thanks, uh, that. thanks for inviting us. By yeah, way. seriously. I didn't expect it. I mean, it was amazing yeah. to me. Hopefully, maybe uh, one of these geez. days, you know, in the future, we might be back on. Absolutely. Maybe. We'll see. see well, yeah, the difference. We'll bring you back. I yeah. have no problems with that. Difference between episode one and episode 20. You get to see, like, the whole difference. It's going to be cool. It's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. I've met you both in real life. We have had some decent times. We've gone for some Michael Phelps swims together. You guys are all IRL. people. IR, IRL friends. IRL. IRL. We IRL stream together without the stream, okay? Friends, right? Friends. 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 We're friends. Yeah. Friends. Okay. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Have a good one, everybody. Three. We're going to do a, a nice little delay ending. 10, 9, 8, 3, 2, 